So hello everybody, James, where are we? We are in Birmingham and you can't go around the UK visiting amazing iconic motorcycle venues mm -hmm. without coming to the museum here in Birmingham. It's, it was founded back in 1984 mm -hmm. by uh, Roy Richards. With Who his private, a collector, Just right? a private collector, yeah. About 350 motorcycles and it's now grown into the world's largest museum, motorcycle museum, with over a thousand motorcycles dating back from 1898. We're going to it's see incredible. some unique pieces right here and we're about to meet James, who is the director here and who will tell us all about it. Let's go and see if we can find him. So, let's go. <laughs> James. James? Nice to meet you. Dominique. Hi, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, meet you. to see you again, nice James. Nice to see you again, pal. Are you well? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Good, good, good. So, so looking forward to this. Thank Welcome for to the National us. Motorcycle Museum. Thank you. Shall we, uh, yes, shall we have go. a look? Let's have a look around. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. After you. Thank Cheers, you. thanks, Andy. So, James, obviously, um, it's iconic, you know, the biggest British motorcycle museum and the biggest collection that we've got here in the world. It's incredible, isn't it? That's right, in the world, yeah. We've got, um, there's actually over a thousand bikes in the collection. Um, and 171 different British manufacturers. Mm -hmm. and of course, as James has identified, the, the museum is all British bikes, so it's a very focused collection and really charts the, the development of the British motorcycle and the motorcycle generally from its inception back in the late 19th centuries through to the, the sort of the British super bikes of today. Obviously, BSA, Royal Enfield, Triumph, any others on, on this author list? Norton. 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 And then all, all the weird makes you've never heard of, like Monopole and yeah. Levis and all, all these all these makes that a lot of people, mm -hmm. perhaps unless they're really into sort of the bikes from the 20s and 30s, we'll, we'll never have heard of. Some that they'll recognise. BSA. BSA, Birmingham Small Arms, very, very local, mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, the thing about the museum is it's really close to where the centre of British motorcycle manufacturer was. All those names like BSA, Norton and Triumph, all very local to here. This is the heart of all the classic it, bikes. It's the heart. It is Dominica, yeah. Let's go and check it out. Let's check it out. <laughs> so we were talking about obviously the earliest models of 1898 and here we are in this amazing room. Yeah, Talk hall, us about that. Yeah, Hall 1. So um, our earliest bikes, as you say, James, 1898. Um, the Beast and Humber tricycle, and um, people have, have heard the name Humber maybe because of cars later on. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of these early motorcycle manufacturers, people might recognise the names because they were sometimes bicycle manufacturers, or like in the case of Singer, there were sewing machine manufacturers. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of names that people might recognise, certainly uh, in the UK, for, for making other things. Yeah. Um, but that was a, a Nottingham made machine, 400cc single cylinder. Um, Lots of different, a, a different way of riding than people will be used to because if you, you look at the machine there, lots of levers, so not a twist grip like you'd be used to, <laughs> but a, a lever throttle. I, uh, I might be better with that now. You might be better with that <laughs> after the injuries, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you're doing everything, so um, the air, you're mixing the air manually for the carburetor, um, the ignition is manual advance and retard so everything that people would be used to today just being done automatically and never thinking about it you've got to do everything yourself so quite complicated really is there a gearbox no no not no. not on the really early bikes mm -hmm. no there were mm -hmm. uh, single speed yeah mm -hmm. and that that came a little bit later mm -hmm. So 1898 up until modern now 2003 yeah. here or? 1898 now up until um the current century so we're into the 2000s now yeah. so mm -hmm. we're a museum for three centuries really yeah. uh, the 19th 20th and, and 21st century yeah the idea of the museum was to present bikes so when you're going around today you'll see everything's pretty much immaculately restored There's one or two exceptions certainly in terms of road bikes they're pretty much exactly as they would have come off the production line mm -hmm. and that was the idea of the founder of the museum a guy called Roy Richards. So no custom bikes? No mm -hmm. and, and he wanted this to be a resource for people to come from all over the world from Japan and America mm -hmm. and Australia as you say James 
And if they'd got a particular bike, they could see it exactly as it would have come off the production line. Mm -hmm. And so that was the idea of the museum. To see the originality. To present mm -hmm. things just as they would have come off the production line in 1911 or 1905. Mm -hmm. Really, really accurate um, representations as far as possible, just as they would have been, just as you would have bought that mm -hmm. back in 1905. Mm -hmm. So how many, obviously that's a whole one, how many halls is there? Is it four so there's, Yeah, so there's five yeah. halls, um, all pretty much the same size, all large. Before, um, a bit of explanation here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got, um, not, not only have we got bikes from uh, three centuries, we've got uh, military machines, we've got what we call working machines, so police machines, we've got prototypes. Um, so within all the bikes that we own, we've got um, different classes of machines as well, not just race bikes, but as I say, wartime machines, working machines. Um. Who supplied um, most bikes to the, to the Was it Norton? No, this is Norton. Yeah, it was, it was pretty much BSA, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, BSA. Which one has a spare tire as well, in and case then, something happens. Yeah, that's right, yeah, it was BSA and then Triumph, yeah. Yeah, Norton. That's not quite a rare one. Yeah, yeah, not 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 so many in Royal Enfield, not so many, and probably the least from um, from Velocet, like this RAF Velocet here. Now, you guys, do you want to see the most expensive bike in the museum? Yes. Which brand is it? Bruff Superior. So Bruff. I've just, were, been, I've just mm -hmm. been talking to the Australian in the foyer who's come from Australia from mm -hmm. from Melbourne. Yeah, and he's. I've just bought one of the 19 they're doing, the new one. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got number three. Oh, wow. I've I got no idea how much that costs, because yeah. I've got yeah. some idea of how, how much these would. Well, talking of a million, <laughs> Bruff Superior. The S S80, S100, that's yeah. exactly right, Dominique, yeah. yeah. And so Bruff were always the most expensive yeah. bike to to purchase back in the day in the 1920s, 1930s. Um, so brushes were always very expensive. Um, and now um, that's carried through to today and they've, they've kept that value and they were so expensive that they were known or so well made. Incredibly fast. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, best known was Lawrence of Arabia who mm -hmm. killed himself mm -hmm. on one, but mm -hmm. they, were, they were always the most expensive bikes back in the day and always the best made. So much so that mm -hmm. Rolls-Royce actually licensed George Bruff to be able to say they were the Rolls-Royce of motorcycles. Mm -hmm. Where they actually were. Well, in, in, mm -hmm. in one respect, yeah, because because of, of, of the quality mm -hmm. and there we have the Bruff Superior Golden Dream and that was a prototype and so Bruffs are very rare, they're very expensive, that's the rarest of all Bruffs because um, the war came and it didn't get made so that was actually made for the motorcycle show in 1939. Jay Leno owns one as well. He does, mm -hmm. he, he does, that's right Bruff, yeah, he's got quite a few, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, of those. no, not not of those. Just the one. We've got that one. We've got that one. And if that ever came to auction, that would probably be around a million pounds. So, yeah. Is this all the police motorcycles back yeah. in the day? So. Yeah. So that's an example of all the police bikes we were talking about. So, yeah, Triumph, Norton. Yeah, Norton, Triumph, especially sold a lot of bikes to the the British police and, mm -hmm. and also to things like the um, the ambulance service. Beautiful, wow. <clears throat> and in these halls, um, where there were big manufacturers like BSA or Norton or Triumph, in the next couple of halls you'll see, like we've got 60 BSA, so we have all the BSAs together, mm -hmm. all the Triumphs together, mm -hmm. all the Nortons together. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's really easy for people to understand that come because mm -hmm. you've got the, the earliest BSA and then the, the newest BSA. So. Mm -hmm. Not only do we, you, can you chart sort of in the... In line. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. not, not only can you see how motorcycles develop, but you can also see how a particular manufacturer developed as well. Yeah, brilliant. Obviously, from the different chain, obviously from the belt drive to the chain to... Mm -hmm. Exactly, James. See like, the development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Belt drive to chain, um, acetylene gas lights to electric. Yeah. Um, later on, of course, drum brakes to disc brakes. Yeah. So, girder forks to telescopic forks. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. The BSA dandy, <laughs> yes. Well, interesting point, Dominica. BSA, we're trying to 
get in on that scooter market and you know the beautifully styled Vespas and Lambrettas and they came up with that thing. So it wasn't a success, shall we say. <laughs> not as good as uh, the other ones. No, not, not quite the styling of a, of a best brewer. Beautiful colour though. Yeah, nice colour, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 No, no, and again, that's what a lot of people say, no, Nick, they'll always find a make here that they've, they've never heard of, yeah. <laughs> we once made the mistake years ago before I came, we did, um, we do weddings here, we have quite a lot of weddings. So it's a wedding venue as yeah, well? Yeah, 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 big wedding venue, yeah. yeah. And, oh, no, uh, I know where I want to get married. <laughs> <laughs> and we once did it with a sidecar, but it broke down. And so, yeah, that's the trouble with the really old bikes. They always break down when you don't want them to, so. Well, you can always have someone like pushing the bike, like secretly hidden behind the side <laughs> car. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> and so in this hall, this is hall four. And again, big blocks of manufacturers. Norton, Royal Enfield and Triumph in this hall. And yeah, the nice thing about Triumph, was we were saying, because uh, Dominic is on the, on the Bonneville, and the, the classic design is still very much there, isn't it? From, from the modern bikes, yeah. even from the, from the 40s and 50s. That's right, yeah. I mean, as, as you'll know, James, it's, um, it's a massive segment of the new motorcycle market now, that whole heritage thing. Yeah. It's worked really well for Triumph, it's working for Norton, it's working for the new BSA company, it's working for, for Royal Enfield, and, and to a degree, I, I suppose, even for, always has done for Harley, but for Ducati as, as well, and BMW, they're all doing something in that. And again, when I started riding in the 80s, everybody wanted sports bikes, and probably like you, James, yeah. everybody was, yeah. And, and that's lower back problems. Yeah, yeah. Lower back. especially, especially yeah. mine. And that's changed completely now. Of course, it's all about that it's heritage and travel. yeah, 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 that heritage thing, which is uh, uh, a bit of a, a different sort of riding experience. But that's that's where it's gone, I guess. Yeah. And so, whole farm. <laughs> Your favourite bike? Well, yeah, <laughs> and my favourite bike, but all the um, all the competition bikes, so all the famous British racing machines, the off-road machines, the sprint machines, so anything competition, whether it was drag racing or competition, all competition, everything competition in this hall, and so some of the most famous um, British, of course, competition machines in the world, and again, a good spread right from the, the early days um, before the First World War. Now, here's, that here's will a, be a bit faster, yeah. right? <laughs> well, there's a famous bike, guys. And this was, of course, where everybody will know the name Bonneville in relation to Triumph. And this is actually really um, where the name came from. Um, this is the 1956 650 Triumph Streamliner, which was called the, the Texas Seagar. Um, and of course, they, it, it took the, um, the World Land Speed record back in, uh, back in the 50s at Bonneville and of course that name stuck and then even to this day mm -hmm. trying to make him and that's where the name came from. These two bikes yep. mm -hmm. were were part of the reason why I got such an interest in road racing. Started racing. Because yeah. with Trevor Nation, Steve Spray right. on these yeah. bikes when they were racing the British Superbikes, yeah. uh, when I was about 13, 14 years old, I watched these around Cadwell Park and thought I this want to have a go it. at that. I yeah. want to go at that. I want to. I want to do what they do. Yeah, and they yeah. sounded amazing, didn't they? Yeah, they uh, did. They didn't go around corners very well, but they certainly but went they down the straights. They sounded amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as James says, Dominica, these Norton Rotaries they revived interest in domestic British racing yeah. in, in the in the late eighties. Yeah. Suddenly, everybody wanted to see these Norton Rotaries that were just wiping the floor with everything. Yeah. Um, and the great giant killing Rotary, my favourite bike in the museum. This one? Hail the White Charger. Ah, oh, the this Steve Islet yes. bike. <laughs> yes, the 92 TT winner, senior TT winning bike of Steve Islop. Still with the flies from, wow. from Goodwood this year, actually. That's got some history. Oh, <laughs> 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 1992. <laughs> and Vintage flies. Of course, this was... 31 years ago, is it? Yeah, yeah 31 years yeah. now. The great Steve Islop, and of course, a, yeah. a great giant killing story. So all, all, all the things that people know about, and Foggy thought, you know, I'll be able to win this, even though it was Steve Islop, who was a fantastic 
TT rider. Yeah. So that, that was really successful years were from about 87, yeah. 88 through yeah. to about mm -hmm. 93. Yeah. I remember, it. wasn't a young Jim Moody also started on them? Yeah. Well, right? yeah, yeah, Jim did. Yeah. yeah. Ian Simpson. So now, yeah. Um, Terry Rhymer rode them a bit. Um, Ron. Ron, Ron, yeah, Ron course, Sparks yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. Robert Dunlop had a lot Robert. of success on them. Yeah. yeah. And this is actually the, that's the, because we're really lucky, we own every works rotary that there was from the prototype that was built from a crashed police road bike mm -hmm. to the first air called race bike. So I believe this is the last fall and uh, we've seen some incredible and unique motorcycles here. Yeah, five halls, over a thousand machines, so uh, we we're really easy to find of course because we're so near Birmingham Airport and, and the NEC that I, I guess a lot of people will know and uh, have visited at different times. So uh, yeah, we'd love, love to see people, especially from Italy and Europe, it's, um, you know, we, we, we always like to see uh, welcome our European friends and there's so much here for people to see. Um, it's, some people come for an hour and they end up staying a day or two days. So. Well, we can see why. There's so many motorcycles in there, but thank you very much, Thank James. you, James. Good it's to been see you. It's an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you so much for Thanks, having us. Yeah, it was really, really Thanks. nice.